Good day and welcome to the online service for Sunred Park Baptist Church on the 23rd of August 2020. We'll be looking today at Galatians chapter 3 and verse uh, 26 to 29, but we'll be reading from verse 25. So Galatians chapter 3 and verse 25 is what our reading is while we'll be looking only at verse 26 to 29. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 25 reads as follows, But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ we are all sons of God through faith. For as many as were were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew or Greek, there is neither slave or free, there is neither neither male or female, for we are all one in Christ. And if we are Christ, then you are, If for if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, is according to promise. Let's read, let's pray together and ask God to bless us as we consider this passage. Father God, we thank you for your precious word and that your word leads us in the truth. It teaches us what is true and what is not. We thank you, Father, that you have worked out your way of salvation even long before this world was created and that you decided to save us, even me, and that you, Father, in Christ gave us so much, even including eternal life. Help us now as we consider this passage through your Holy Spirit. Lead us in the truth and help us to understand what you are teaching us from your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, most of us know what it feels like to get a new job. And, and when you start a new job, you move on from everything that was related to your previous job. You you get a new boss, you get new colleagues, you get a new salary, new benefits. Uh, you're done with the previous place where you used to work. You, you don't get in your car and go back to your previous company. You don't report to your same boss. No, you have new colleagues and, and you get a new salary. You don't get your old salary anymore as well. And so Paul is saying to us in verse 25, but now that we, that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. And his point is that we are no longer under the law. We are no longer condemned by the law. But now that we have come to faith, things are different. They are not, no longer the same. And what has changed is that we are now in Christ. We are finished with our discussion on the law. Uh, we are no f- now focusing on what we are in Christ. We, the law is no longer our prison keeper. The law, law is no longer our guardian. It has handed us over to Christ. And so we now have a new identity in Christ through faith. We are united to Christ by faith. And therefore we are now accepted by God. And, and we are accepted despite the fact that we are not able to keep the law perfectly because it is by grace that we are now considered to be in Christ. The last four verses of the chapter of Galatians chapter 3 tells us what we have become in Christ. And we will see that through faith we are united with Christ. And because we are united with Christ, three things are true of us. And that's what we'll be looking at today, these three truths, these things that are true of us because we are in Christ. And firstly, the first of those truths is that in Christ we are sons of God. We look at that by looking at verse 26 and 27. Let's just read that together. For in Christ Jesus you are sons of God through faith. And so we are no longer condemned by the law. We are 
set free from the prison. We are released into the care of Jesus Christ. We have outgrown our guardian spiritually so that we are now free in Christ. We are no longer uh, in fear of God's punishment because he is now our father who loves us and who we love. And it is because we love him that we desire to live a life that is dedicated to him. And so now we are sons of God, not because of our own works, but because we are in Christ. Now many believe that all people in this world are the sons of God, but Scripture does not teach that. What Scripture does teach is that God is the creator of all things and every one, and that everyone and everything, therefore, stands under the authority of God, and that God maintains all things. And, and that means that God is the king over all people, and therefore, whether they acknowledge it or not, men will have to bow the knee before God. But God is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by our unity with Jesus Christ, God is also now our Father. It is in Christ that God has become the Father of everyone who believes. He has adopted us as sons. And so for someone to be the Son of God or to be a child of God, he must be in Christ. And for someone to be in Christ, he must believe in him. That's what verse 26 tells us when it says, For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. There is no other way. We cannot deserve it. We are not children of God by nature, but when we are united to Christ by faith, we become the children of God. But but Paul goes further in verse 27, and he says that everyone who is baptized into Christ has put on Christ like, like clothing. What Paul is saying then is, he's not speaking about uh, water baptism, because water baptism is an outward sign of an inward occurrence in the life of the believer. Something happened to every person when they come to faith, and that is that we are baptized by the Holy Spirit. We call it the new birth or or conversion. And it is by this baptism by the Holy Spirit that we are actually clothed by Christ. And it's important that we understand that this is what Paul is saying here, because sadly these false teachers has come to this church has come into the church in general and said that water baptism saves you. But water baptism is merely an outward sign of something which happened inwardly. It's a physical washing by water that symbolizes our spiritual cleansing of our sins. And though water baptism, which is a sign, cannot save us, We have to understand that if Paul was teaching that water baptism could save us, he was simply saying the same thing that this false teachers who came to Galatia was saying. Remember that these false teachers were Jews, and and they believed that only the Jews could be the children of God. And so therefore, if a Christian, if any Christian in this church in Galatia, was from the Gentiles, the only way in which they could be saved was for them to become a Jew. They had to keep the law. They had to especially be circumcised. So, in fact, if Paul was teaching here that water baptism, which is a substitute of circumcision, could save you, he was actually teaching exactly the same thing as these false teachers were teaching. But no, he says, by faith we are saved. And it is by faith that we are united to Christ. And if we are united to Christ, that's how we become the sons of God. It's not by becoming a Jew. It's not by obeying the law. It is by being in Christ through faith. That is how we are clothed with Christ. 
by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, by coming to faith. And so let's sum up what we've learned in this first passage. It is by faith that we become in Christ. And in Christ it is that we become the children of, of God, the sons of God. And water baptism is a testimony that we are united in Christ. And therefore, indeed, it is important for every believer to be baptized because we want to bear witness of the fact that we are in Christ. But baptism itself, the water baptism, doesn't save us. So that's the first thing that we are told in this passage, that everyone who is in Christ by faith are children of God. But secondly, then, in in verse 28, we see in Christ we are all one. The Bible teaches us that the only way for us to overcome the divisions is in Christ. We we live in a, a divided world, a world divided by race and by by status and by gender. But, says verse 28, in Christ we are no longer divided, but we are one. Listen to what it says. It says, there is neither Jew or Greek. There is neither slave or free. There is neither male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And so in short, what Paul is saying is, in Christ, all Christians have become a new humanity. The Greek word, the Greek actually here says that, for you are one man in Christ. And so what God has worked in Christ then is nothing else, nothing short of a complete new humanity. Our relationship with one another is now based on our relationship with Christ. We are united to Him and therefore we are united with one another. Our fellowship with Christ becomes the basis of our fellowship with every other believer. I like the way in which the the German theologian of the 16th, 17th century, Johann Heidegger, puts it. He says that the communion of the saints is the union, the society and assembly of all believers who have something in common with each other. And uh, now this common thing is Christ, the head of the church, as well as the gifts which flow down from him as the head of the body. And so what divided us before now does not divide us anymore. Because the thing that we have in common is more important than the thing that divides us. Now, let's just quickly look at the the three things he mentions here that brought divisions amongst men. And still does, even to this day. The first one, the first division which is gone in Christ, was based on race. He says, there is neither Jew or Greek. Now, God called Abraham and his descendants to entrust to them his unique self-revelation. But then when Christ came, God fulfilled his promise to Abraham. Through his seed, that is Christ, all the nations of the world was blessed. From every nation, tribe, and language, people would come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and be blessed. And so now, every man is equal. Equal in our need for salvation. Equal in our inability to merit it by our own works. Equal in the fact that God offers us salvation in Christ through believing in Him by grace. And so we are all equal in this. But now that we've come to faith, we are transformed into a single fellowship with one another. We are all one in Christ. And so therefore, brothers and sisters, this is important. There is no longer any ground for division based upon race amongst believers. Secondly, the second division which is gone in Christ was based on status. And Paul says there in verse 28, he says, there is neither slave or free. 
Now, whether you want to know it or not, every society in history was based, was, has divided people into different classes. We divide people based on their wealth, or based on their education, based on their privilege. But now in Christ, there is no longer any classes. The doctor and the street sweeper are equal. As an example, think about church membership. We do not come to you and ask you what is your occupation, or where have you studied, or in which area do you stay? No, the determining factor whether you can become a member of a Christian church is are you in Christ or not, or at least it should be. Who or what you may be, you are equally guilty, equally unworthy. And the same grace has made you what you are if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no higher or lower class Christians in the Christian church. Because we are all believers only by grace alone. The last division which is gone in Christ was based on gender. And so Paul says there in verse 28, he says, there is no male and female. Now we know that women were treated pretty harshly in biblical times, in, in ancient times, especially this was also true uh, within Judaism. Women were mi mistreated and exploited. But now in Christ, women and men are equal. We are both formed in the image of God, men and women alike. And so women are not in, inferior within the faith community. All men and women are saved based on their faith in Jesus Christ alone. They are all men and women, sons of God, if they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever divided us in the past no longer divides us. Because what unites us is more important, isn't it? And the thing that unites us is the fact that we are in Christ through faith. Of course, this does not mean that the things that differentiate people from another has disappeared. Paul was born a Jew, and he was still a Jew after his conversion. A slave doesn't suddenly become a free man simply because he trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and a woman remains a woman. She doesn't suddenly become a man as soon as she trusts in the Lord Jesus. And so the things that differentiate us still remains. But this is the difference. Although we are different, our differences doesn't divide us anymore. It doesn't prevent us from having fellowship with one another. Because we are all equals. All of us are in Christ. We are no longer looking down on one another. We are no longer exalting ourselves above others because we are all in Christ. What unites us, namely Christ, is more important to us than the things that differentiate us. So let's sum up. What Paul is saying in verse 28 is that in Christ we are all one. What divided us before no longer divides us. What differentiated us hasn't changed. Yes, it still remains the same. There's still black and white Christians. There's still rich and poor Christians. There's still male and female Christians. But these distinguishing features of every person doesn't divide us any longer. Because we are equally lost, equally guilty before God. The same grace has saved us. None of us is better than the other. And so now in Christ, we have all become brothers and sisters of one another. And we have fellowship with one another despite our differences. Because what unites us has become more important and, and greater and more precious to us than the things that divides us. Namely, that we are in Christ. And in Christ, we have become a new humanity. In Christ... We are all one, says Paul. Thirdly and finally, in Christ we are heirs of the promise, he says in verse 20, 29. 
And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to promise. So we have now seen that in Christ, through faith, we all belong to God. We are God's children. We've also seen that we, in Christ, through faith, belong to one another. We are one, no longer divided, but united. But now we will also see that in Christ, by faith, we will inherit eternal life because we are the offspring of Abraham. Now, Abraham believed, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 4, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And in the same way, the faith of everyone who is in Christ Jesus will be counted to him as righteousness. We are, therefore, the spiritual descendants of Abraham. Because in Christ, we have become heirs of the promise that God had made to Abraham. God's new humanity in Christ isn't just for now and here, it is for eternity. Now, in ancient times, when a person um, wanted to inherit, the only person who could inherit was a direct descendant from the person who had passed away. But in Christ, the seed of the promise, we are now the heirs of the promise of Abraham. We inherit in Christ everything that God has promised us, namely the forgiveness of sins and eternal life and many other things. Now these Jewish false teachers who also, of course, believed that God had a plan for a single humanity, one nation, in fact, that they would be blessed by God forever, but they believed that it was only the Jews. And so therefore, if anyone... If it, for anyone to be a child of Abraham, they had to become a Jew. And so how did they become a Jew? Well, by obedience to the law and by circumcision. But Paul comes and tells them, these false teachers, you're making a grave mistake here, because those who are in the church of Galatia, whether they are from the Gentiles or not, are already the children of Abraham solely because of their faith in Christ. Brothers and sisters, there is only one family of God. There is only one nation of God, and it is those who are united to Christ. Those who are in Christ are the children of God, are the ones who are united with one another, are the heirs of the promise that God has made to Abraham, eternal life. And many other things. Let me put the question to you in a different way. Is there any other way to God but through Jesus Christ? Is it possible for a Muslim to be good enough so that he can earn his salvation? Can a Hindu do enough good works to appease the gods that he worships? Or more to our point here this morning. How could we even start to think that any Jewish person could ever be good enough to earn God's salvation? Or how could we think that even us could ever be good enough to earn God's salvation? And so therefore Paul comes in our passage and says, But God saved us through grace, through faith, only in Christ because through faith in Christ alone, God, by His grace, has made us the sons of God, has united us together as one, and has given us eternal life. That's what Paul is teaching us in this passage. But what must we learn from this? Well, firstly, we are the sons of God. Not because we deserve it but because God is gracious to us in Christ Jesus. By believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the sons of God. We are clothed with Christ. We are baptized into Christ through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We are in Christ. And circumcision cannot make us the children of God, neither can the water baptism. And therefore... 
For you to be in Christ, you have to believe in Him. And if you are in Christ, you can know that God is now your Father. He loves you. He cares for you. And He works all things together for your good. But through faith then, we also should love Him. And therefore live to please Him in all that we do. Secondly, we must learn that we are one. In Christ there is no division anymore. There's no more Jew, Jews or Greeks or Japanese or Indian or English or, or Zulu. There's no more slave or free man, no poor or rich man. There's no educated or uneducated. There's no more male or female. Is because even though we do differ from one another physically and, and through what we go through and what we have in life, it doesn't matter anymore. All that counts is Christ. And we are in Him and therefore we are one. And we must, brothers and sisters, we must have fellowship with one another over all divisional lines. The things that divided us before. Everyone who is in Christ is a brother or a sister. Thirdly and finally, we are heirs, heirs of eternal life, but so much more. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us that we are chosen, predestined by God, children of God. We are saved, we are justified, we are forgiven, we are sanctified, and so much more. In Christ and in Him alone we receive these things. And we will receive them only if we believe in Jesus Christ and not because of any merit of our own. Paul says to us in this passage, we are in Christ because we are united to him by faith and therefore we are sons of God. Therefore we are one with one another and therefore we will inherit eternal life together with Abraham, the father of faith. In Christ Jesus, who is the seed of the promise that God had made to him. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this day that you are such a gracious God. That you have given us eternal life. That you have made us brothers of one another, even across lines which would normally divide us as people. That you have made us your sons. You have, in, you have adopted us in Christ Jesus so that we can have all the blessings that comes with that. We thank you, Father, that this is all your do doing because we realize, Father, how far, far we fall short of being what you expect from us. But it is by faith through Jesus Christ, by your grace, that you have saved us. And we thank you for that. Help us now to live as those who are your children, that we will day by day more and more resemble your character, that we will become holy as you are holy. Help us to truly be a brother to one another, brothers and sisters of one another. Help us to live in harmony and peace and in love towards one another and to share fellowship even across all lines that normally in the past would divide us. Help us to work about in, in our hearts about those things that perhaps still divides us. And we thank you, Father, that you have given us an inheritance, undeserved, only by your grace. Because you have promised it all those years ago to Abraham. And all your promises, including this one, is true. And yes, and amen, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Help us to trust you in this. Help us to be excited about what you have given us, what you have done for us. And help us to live as those who are truly in Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.